Hey, what's up folks? This is Keith and you're watching Barber's Auto Help. In today's video, I've got a Chrysler Pentastar 3.6 liter and I'm going to be tearing it apart while discussing the various parts of the engine and describing how they work. So let's go ahead and get into it. So some interesting facts about this particular engine here. It was introduced by Chrysler back in 2011 and is used till this day. It's used on Chrysler vehicles, Dodges and Jeeps. It has a compression ratio of 10.2 to 1. It utilizes a sequential multi-port fuel injection system and can produce 275 to 305 horsepower and 251 to 269 pound-feet of torque. Okay, so before I tear into this thing, I'm going to go around the outside of it here and name off a few parts first. At the top here, you can see this black piece. This is called a valve cover or rocker cover. That sits right on top of the cylinder head, which is this block of metal right here that goes the entire length of the engine block, which is this part right here. This is the engine block. It's a big hunk of metal that the cylinder heads fit on. And you have all of this on the other side of the engine too, by the way, because this is a V6. And just beneath the engine block, you have the upper and lower oil pans. Now, on the top here, you'll notice that there are some missing parts. Uh, there would be an intake manifold to sit right in this intake valley right here, but I did not receive that with this engine. And then on the front of the engine here, the front has what's called a front engine cover or timing cover. And then right on the front of that, you have the water pump right here. That's just an idler pulley right there. And then beneath that, you have the harmonic balancer. And then that's just your serpentine belt tensioner pulley right there and tensioner. So we're gonna start at the top of the engine. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take both of these rocker covers off or valve covers off. And then we're gonna check out the valve train just beneath that. Okay, so we got the valve cover off on this side. I also went ahead and off camera took the valve cover off of the other side. And you can see you got two camshafts right here, an exhaust or intake camshaft and an exhaust camshaft. And on these camshafts you have lobes and beneath that you have what's called cam followers. Then you'll have tappets or valve lash adjusters where those followers ride on. And then on the other side, you'll have the valves. And, and I'll take all this off and you'll get to see this uh, broken down a little bit more clearly. Uh, but this is your what's called a valve train. And it's just a, a train of valves all the way down the uh, cylinder head there on both sides of the engine here. At this point, we need to go ahead and get rid of our engine mount bracket, our idler pulley and tensioner pulley, and get to taking the water pump off. All right, now we're down to the water pump here. Let's go ahead and unbolt it. All right, now that our bolts are out, we're just gonna take and pry it away from the timing cover. This right here is the water pump gasket. So this is it without that gasket on there. And you can see inside, you got a little impeller that spins when this pulley spins right here. The serpentine belt in the accessory drive spins this pulley, which causes that impeller to spin, and that pushes the coolant through the engine and through the radiator. And that's what pumps the coolant or water. I keep calling it water. It's actually coolant, guys. But uh, that's how that works right there. Set that off to the side, we'll keep going. Okay, now at this point right here, we could remove the harmonic balancer, but there's a couple of bolts, it looks like, that goes up through the uh, upper oil pan into the timing cover. So I'm going to go ahead and flip the engine upside down, take the lower oil pan off, and then go from there. All right, let's go ahead and get these oil pan bolts out. I'm just going to take a little pry bar action to the wool pan here. Oh 
Okay, so while we're in here, let's talk about a few things. I'm sure you noticed this little doohickey right here. This is actually your oil pickup, and you can see inside there, there's a little screen, and that's what keeps any foreign materials or large objects from being pumped into the oil system of your engine. So it screens that out before it actually gets into the oil pump there. And of course, this is your oil pump. It's chain driven, and that's what pulls the oil out of the oil sump or oil pan, which is the thing I just took off, and pumps the oil under pressure throughout the engine to lubricate the, the upper portion of the engine and the crank bearings and the cams and rockers and all of that. And after we get further along, we'll probably take this oil pump off and try to dissect it and see what's going on on the inside of this thing. So hang with us. Okay, so I got the lower oil pan off and now our bolts that go into the bottom of our timing cover are exposed and we can get them out. But while I'm at it, I'm just gonna go ahead and take this upper oil pan off too. All the bolts are exposed now. I can get to them very easily. So we'll go ahead and do that. By the way, guys, when you're seeing me disassemble this thing and I'm taking bolts out in a circular pattern like I'm doing right here and I'm being very rough with everything, this engine isn't going back together. This is going to the scrap yard. So I don't really care about warping anything or uh, damaging any surfaces or anything like that. So this isn't necessarily a video on how to properly disassemble an engine. This video is basically for the purposes of entertainment, of course, and also to explain the theory and operation of certain items within the engine and on the engine. Okay, we got all our bolts out. Let's go ahead and pry the sucker off. Voila. Okay, let's go ahead and work on getting this harmonic balancer off and the timing cover. Now, I'm sure you're probably wondering why in the world did they call this pulley, this crank pulley, uh, harmonic balancer or crankshaft damper? Well, whenever this thing is spinning, it has, a, it has a lot of weight on the outside here. And whenever it's spinning, it has inertia and it keeps this pulley wanting to spin in the same way at the same speeds. So it kind of smooths out any of the imbalances of the crankshaft whenever the engine is running by keeping that inertia going and keeping it wanting to spin in the same way. It kind of works out those hiccups, if you will, inside the engine. Okay, let's work on getting this timing cover off. And the whole purpose of this thing is to cover up all of that right there. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and flip the engine back around and then we'll work on getting through our timing components here. Okay, so this is your timing chain drive right here. And you can see it's comprised of a bunch of chains and sprockets. So I'm going to go ahead and break it down for you. This here is your crankshaft and on your crankshaft you have a crank sprocket. Now on this crank sprocket you have a chain that goes down to your oil pump right here. And that's what drives this oil pump. Now you notice right here, you have this little mechanism here. That's your chain tensioner for the oil pump. And that keeps the chain taut so that it doesn't jump. And then you've also got another chain that goes off the back side of the crank sprocket here up to this sprocket. And it also has a tensioner on it and a guide. Then from the center sprocket here, you have a chain on that goes up to each head, one on this side and one on this side. And they also have guides and tensioners. And these tensioners and guides are used to keep those chains taut so that you don't jump timing. Okay, I'm going to start out here and remove this cover on the oil pump here and then the chain. I'm going to have to remove this sprocket too. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and remove the tensioner off of this side here. Now something interesting I wanted to point out here, uh, these hydraulic timing chain tensioners 
uh, are pretty interesting in how they work. First of all, you have this little piston here, and it's spring-loaded. There's actually a spring inside there, but not only is it spring-loaded, but on the inside, on the other side here, you see that you have this little cavity there, and then this little hole. This is an oil passage right here. It, uh, this is where this particular tensioner sits, and this whole hollow area right there is just a, a passage where pressurized oil is and that oil gets up into this little hole there and it actually pushes out on that piston a little bit more than just that spring would. So this is sitting here the whole time applying pressure to that tensioner guide. Now the tensioner guide of course sits on a little pivot like that and that's the only thing that holds this on and then you got the hydraulic tensioner on this part of the tensioner arm or guide and it's just pushing in like that. And that's what keeps the timing chains tight. Now on this engine here, you have a total of three hydraulic tensioners. One right here, here, and then one down here. And then the one you saw me take off earlier on the oil pump drive, that's actually a spring tensioner on that one. There's no hydraulic uh, portion to that particular tensioner right there. Now another interesting fact about this, and this is actually applicable to all of the internal combustion four-stroke engines out there that I know of anyway, this crankshaft is timed to these camshafts so that whenever the crankshaft makes two revolutions, the camshafts make one revolution. And this helps out with the four-stroke process. You have your intake, you have your compression, you have your combustion, and then your exhaust. And if you didn't have the crankshaft timed to the camshafts in that manner, you couldn't have those four strokes. Now, another interesting fact about this engine when it comes to the timing system here, uh, you see the front of the camshafts, you have these little sprockets. These are called variable cam timing units or camshaft phasers. And what they do is they allow the camshafts, the timing of the camshafts to be adjusted in relation to the crankshaft just a bit there. And this helps with like performance and emissions and overall drivability. So I should have mentioned this at the very beginning. Uh, this is kind of a, a, a big point that I should have made, but you know, you got dual array cam here with variable cam timing units on each of the cams there. So that's kind of a big deal. And pretty interesting how that works and we will be getting into that by the way in our next episode uh, i'm thinking that this is probably going to be a three-part series a two maybe a three-part series but uh, that does it for this particular video whenever the next video becomes available i'll post a link down in the description to that video you're more than welcome to watch it and we're actually going to get into the cylinder heads for sure on the next episode. Uh, I'm even going to take these cam phasers apart and look on the inside there. And we're going to get the rundown on how these things actually work. And we're going to take a closer look at the valve train and the cylinder head as a whole. So stay tuned, guys. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Thank you again for watching.